Veronica Lake's deadly beautiful cost her everything. Veronica Lake was born Constance Frances Marie Ackelman on November 14, 1922, in Brooklyn, New York. Her early life was marked by significant challenges, beginning with her parents' divorce when she was young. This event set the stage for a turbulent childhood, characterized by frequent moves and instability. As her parents separated, Veronica, along with her mother and younger siblings, relocated multiple times, often struggling to find stability amidst financial strain. These early experiences deeply influenced her later life and career, shaping her resilience and determination. Despite the difficulties she faced during her formative years, Veronica's innate talent and striking beauty would eventually propel her into the spotlight of Hollywood's golden age, where she would leave an indelible mark on the world of cinema and fashion. Veronica Lake's journey into acting began early in her life, initially as a child model, showcasing a natural charm and photogenic quality that caught the eye of industry insiders. This early experience laid the foundation for her future career in entertainment. In 1939, at the age of 17, she signed a contract with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, one of Hollywood's most prestigious studios at the time. As part of her entry into the world of film, she adopted the stage name Veronica Lake, a persona that would become synonymous with glamour and mystery. The decision to change her name was not uncommon in Hollywood during that era, as studios often crafted identities for their stars that would resonate with audiences and fit their screen image. For Veronica Lake, this transformation was pivotal in establishing her as a distinctive figure in the industry. Her new name, paired with her trademark peak a boo hairstyle, a cascading wave that partially covered one eye, contributed to her iconic allure and mystique on screen. Veronica Lake's career in the 1940s was marked by several notable successes, positioning her as one of Hollywood's leading actresses of the era. Her breakthrough came with the film I Wanted Wings in 1941, where her peak a boo hairstyle made a lasting impression and sparked a trend. Following this, she starred in the critically acclaimed Sullivan's Travels, 1941, directed by Preston Sturgis. In this film, Lake showcased her versatility beyond her trademark appearance, delivering a nuanced performance as the girl, opposite Joel McRae's character, John L. Sullivan. The film itself was a satire on Hollywood and societal issues, blending comedy with poignant social commentary, and Lake's portrayal added depth to its narrative. Another significant highlight of Veronica Lake's career during this period was This Gun for Hire, 1942, a film noir classic where she starred alongside Alan Ladd. In this crime thriller, based on a novel by Graham Greene, Lake plays a pivotal role as nightclub singer Ellen Graham whose involvement with a hitman, played by Ladd, unfolds into a complex tale of intrigue and moral ambiguity. The film not only capitalized on the chemistry between Lake and Ladd but also showcased her ability to inhabit roles that balanced allure with emotional depth. Her performance in this gun for hire solidified her status as a leading actress in film noir, a genre that thrived during the 1940s and shaped her on-screen persona as a femme fatale. Veronica Lake's career, despite its early successes and iconic status, faced significant challenges, particularly in her relationships with studios and directors. While she was admired for her on-screen presence and distinctive style, behind the scenes, Lake developed a reputation for being headstrong and independent-minded. This reputation often clashed with the rigid control exerted by studio executives during Hollywood's golden age. Lake's insistence on creative input and her refusal to conform to studio demands sometimes led to conflicts, delays in production, and strained relationships with directors and producers. These difficulties with studios and directors were exacerbated by Lake's struggles, which began to impact her career in the late 1940s. As the decade progressed, she faced a series of personal setbacks, including divorces, health issues, and financial instability. These challenges took a toll on her professional life, affecting her ability to secure roles and maintain her standing in Hollywood. Additionally, changing audience tastes and the evolving landscape of post-war cinema contributed to a decline in demand for the kind of roles she had become known for, such as the femme fatale. Despite efforts to revive her career through various projects, including a brief stint on Broadway and television appearances, 
Lake found it increasingly difficult to regain the momentum she had enjoyed earlier in her career. Her decline in popularity and professional opportunities marked a poignant chapter in her life, reflecting broader shifts in the entertainment industry and the challenges faced by many stars of Hollywood's golden age as they navigated changing times. Veronica Lake's later life was marked by profound challenges, including battles with alcoholism and financial instability that persisted through and beyond her acting career. As the demands and pressures of Hollywood took their toll, Lake turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism, a common refuge for many stars facing the stresses of fame and personal turmoil. Her struggles with alcoholism not only impacted her health but also contributed to strained relationships and periods of professional instability. Despite attempts to address her addiction, including periods of sobriety, it remained a persistent issue throughout her life. Financial instability compounded Lake's difficulties. Despite her earlier success and significant earnings, financial mismanagement and personal setbacks led to economic hardship. Legal disputes, failed business ventures, and obligations from previous marriages contributed to her financial woes, leaving her vulnerable to financial insecurity in her later years. These challenges were exacerbated by changing times in Hollywood, where roles for actresses of her generation became increasingly scarce further complicating her efforts to rebuild her career and financial stability. In her later years, Veronica Lake faced homelessness and health issues, marking a stark contrast to her glamorous image on screen. Struggling to make ends meet, she lived in various places, including shelters and inexpensive apartments, highlighting the stark reality behind the facade of stardom. Health problems, including complications from her alcoholism and other ailments, further impacted her quality of life. Despite these hardships, she continued to make occasional appearances in film and television, albeit in roles that did not match the heights of her earlier career. With her role in The Hour Before the Dawn, 1944, Lake changed her trademark hairstyle to encourage women working in war industry factories to adopt more practical, safer hairstyles. Lake had done so at the government's urging to help decrease accidents involving women getting their hair caught in machinery. The film was not a success. Lake's image change and her unsympathetic role of Nazi spy Dora Bruckman earned negative reviews. They made her cut her hair for propaganda and then ignored her because she wasn't sexy peekaboo anymore. Really disgusting how Hollywood chews people up and spits them out. Veronica was gorgeous and even though people don't give her her flowers, she influenced so many people with her style. It's a blessing and a curse being drop-dead gorgeous. Seriously like super pretty girls get attacked the most because they're pretty. Jealousy is a disease and they're victims of it. Veronica Lake's final years and the circumstances surrounding her death paint a poignant picture of the challenges she faced in life. In June 1973, after returning from promoting her autobiography and touring in England, she traveled through Vermont, where she sought medical attention for stomach pains. It was during this visit that doctors diagnosed her with cirrhosis of the liver, a condition directly linked to her years of alcohol abuse. This diagnosis marked a tragic culmination of her struggles with alcoholism, which had plagued her for much of her adult life. Realizing the severity of her condition, Veronica Lake checked into the University of Vermont Medical Center in Burlington on June 26, 1973. However, her health continued to deteriorate rapidly. On July 7, 1973, she passed away at the hospital due to complications from acute hepatitis and acute kidney injury, conditions exacerbated by her underlying cirrhosis. Her death at the age of 50 shocked and saddened fans who remembered her as a glamorous star of the silver screen. Following her death, Veronica Lake's son, Michael, took charge of her arrangements. Her memorial service was held at the Universal Chapel in New York City on July 11 where friends, family, and colleagues gathered to pay their respects and remember her life and contributions to film and culture. As per her wishes, Veronica Lake was cremated, and her ashes were scattered off the coast of the Virgin Islands, a final resting place that held personal significance for her. However, the story of Veronica Lake's ashes took an unexpected turn. In 2004, reports surfaced that some of her ashes had been found in a New York antique store, stirring controversy and speculation about how they ended up there. 
This discovery added a posthumous twist to the legacy of a woman whose life had been marked by both triumphs and tribulations, revealing the complexities of fame, mortality, and the enduring fascination with Hollywood icons. Veronica Lake's life and death continue to resonate as a cautionary tale about the price of fame and the personal toll of addiction. Her legacy extends beyond the screen to include a broader reflection on the challenges faced by many in the entertainment industry, reminding us of the human behind the celebrity persona and the enduring impact of her contributions to cinema and style. It's insane that none of her husbands came to her funeral. Those were not good men she married. Wish she had more loved ones with her near that time. What do you think about Veronica Lake's life? Comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.